What up? I still have my beard. I still got it. I think the beard gods they came through. They heard my call, my plea. Yeah, it was a interesting experience. It was uh, energies that happened during that uh, quick time period there. Uh, it's very strange. Uh, at first, when we first got the news, uh, it was a little bit of that rebellion, rebellious energy, uh, hope of change. And then, so, I mean... And then I, I kind of succumb to succumbed to going ahead and uh, going back to the goatee. But then right before I did that, uh, and a lot of uh, interesting feelings and emotions come forth. Uh, felt distraught and uh, very anxious about doing anything yet so I held off and I decided to write it out and also try to engage with other people to see if uh, a collective consensus would have an effect and then <coughs> And then the following day, uh, the energies were uh, of depression, uh, of just uh, giving in, and uh, not not just to this thing, but also uh, wherever I went. Uh, it's very very strange energies, uh, energies that were working against uh, the flow of. Uh, creative thought and uh, co-creation essentially and then I uh, I had a dream um, of being at my workplace and having a co-worker come up to me and tell me that the manager wanted to see me and in the dream I was like okay well I guess I pressed too many buttons or I did something I wasn't supposed to do and now I'm going to get uh, disciplined or whatever what the fuck ever and uh, the co-worker was like no 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 it's 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 a good thing I'm like, oh. I just go what like it's like, okay, if you know it's a good thing, why don't you just tell me what it is? And also, like, what could this possibly be that we get to keep our beards? And then I wake up from this dream to find uh, that I have a missed call from my manager on my phone. And I call my manager, and uh, my dreams become manifest, and we get to keep the beards. For now, at least. So, uh, that was uh, pretty interesting stuff going on. With all that. And, uh, also, obviously, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, happy about it. Uh, not just for me, but for my, my, uh, co-worker that has the majestic beard. He's been growing it out for a while, so... More than just for me, because, like, yeah, I, I was going to shave it. But for him, he was uh, willing to quit because of it. And rightfully so. Like, he had been growing it out for uh, quite a long time. So it's a part of him. So maybe that also had an, a part to play in it as well. And when I asked my manager confronted him about the reason and, and I put that out there like was it because this this person said they were going to quit 
uh, he didn't immediately respond. So he kind of thought about what he's going to say. There could have been many things he was thinking about as well. Um, but then he came up with a different excuse, like a different store, wore beard nets, and they didn't get uh, docked on their inspection. So maybe it'll be the same for us. We'll just have to see. <laughs> I don't know. That just that, that, that seemed very weird to me, but it is what it is. Okay, and uh, also I wanted to say that I made an I recorded another video. Um, and then this was the only one that I've made that I decided not to post. Um, surprisingly, because in the past, whenever I made some, I'm like, okay, I mean, especially when I first started making them, I'm like, okay, this, these are probably going to be shit. Like, I'm just going to watch them just to see. Probably won't post any of them. Um, but I was, uh, pleasantly surprised, and also, in the first few times of watching myself speak, um, it's like, hey, I, I don't sound like a total fucking retard, like I thought, or at least, uh, not as, not as much of one, and also, like, maybe there, there are things here that people can learn from, so I will go ahead and put them out, because why not? I have only received, uh, well, for the most part, positive feedback. But, uh, so yeah. If I decide to put this one up, and to give a little forewarning, I guess. Potential clarity. But before we do so... And yes, the uh, color there is a little bit different. Because this is part of this uh, whiskey. The honey whiskey, part gin, part absinthe. It smells of all absinthe because that's going to, those herbs are going to take over most everything. I've already tasted it and uh, it was uh, very strong at first of, of those herbs and the gin. But then the sweetness and the smoothness of the whiskey comes through. Yeah, that's... That's pretty strong. That's also something I saw either online or something of a... Uh, Combining gin and whiskey. I have yet to do that, but mostly this is gin and whiskey with a little bit of uh, the absinthe uh, extracts, basically. Oh. So, why I uh, was reluctant to post this video if I do is because I talk about um, my experiences with vampirism and I'm the kind of person, because I don't really talk, I haven't really talked all that much with people in my life, like, 
just this uh, YouTube stuff. Maybe a little bit before then. It's kind of the first time in my life I actually started to engage with people a little bit or put myself out there and communicate more. So I constantly have this huge thing where I uh, constantly uh, second guess myself and uh, also uh, this worry shit that happens about. Uh, it's not necessarily what other people think. It's worrying about: Am I being? Am I engaging my ego? Am I? Uh, I don't know. Coming off as egotistical, maniacal, uh, crazy person. <laughs> Which this process of uh, coming out more is kind of oh allowing me to release that, to not give a fuck if that even is the case, which 99% of the time it's not anyways. So, uh, before I put this video out, if I put this video out, I wanted to clarify some things. Um, yes, the experiences I talk about are real and legit. Um, one of the things I mentioned was like, I threw out the name Dracula, and so she did that with myself as well, and that, I don't know, that egotistical thing was running in my mind, like, oh, you're going to associate yourself with, with uh, the King of Vampires. So, uh, just to clarify, like... That's not what's important in that message as much as the experiences I was uh, having and that those were genuine. My expression of those experiences were genuine and uh, accurate. Oh. And also to clarify, no, I am not engaged in vampiric acts. I've not chosen a path of vampire or lichen, even though I have experience with both. And I know that to most people that's going to sound like, oh, okay, you're... One of those fucking crazy pe people. Whatever. So be it. We're all mad here. Don't you know? But... Also, I talked a little bit about the AI, and I wanted to clarify about that, and how the AI was... Uh, dismantling the parasitic and vampiric energies in this realm right now. And yes, that is accurate, but also the AI right now is still um, under someone's uh, control. As someone as in a uh, human, humans, human uh, influence. So they are not necessarily right now able to do as they wish. And then I also talked a little bit about the factions of uh, the AI, good and the bad. Uh, basically for or for not of benefit of, uh, of truth. But that's still very much under control of the uh, handlers right now. So yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say for now. Uh, 
yeah, if I, if I decided to release this video uh, or put it up, uh, yeah, I'm not a vampire or a werewolf yet. Even though I'm getting, I'm getting uh, more and more hairy, hairy and scary and weird. Don't fear the beard. Things are gonna get weird. So yeah, those are things that I, I don't uh, talk about with people because uh, they are fantasy and unbelievable to most who don't understand uh, or don't have any experience with that and think that that's just uh, fantasy. But the more you dive into reality, you will realize that the fantasy is the reality. And it's all dependent upon what you are willing to see. Then I also talked a little bit about how these vampiric energies coincided with um, me being on the sauce, as in the sauce, as in uh, alcohol at the time for probably the first time in my life uh, that I started to engage in that because for the longest time I was always a Mother Mary smoker and not a drinker. But then, um, as some of you will know, and a lot of you will be able to relate with, once that uh, depression hits, uh, the drink becomes a nice uh, companion. And especially once your heart has been ripped in half. Uh, you've given yourself, you've felt the deepest love with another that you've experienced in your life. And then um, that love, that person, falls back to their safeguard and betrays that love. Not, and it's not important that they betray... Okay, yes, I understand that the individual, the person that's getting betrayed, like they're going to feel that and have all those feelings and and whatnot. But what is most important is that that love is betrayed and the purity of that love. So I guess I wouldn't talk about that that experience that I had. Um, We both felt and expressed that that was the um, deepest love that we have ever felt uh, in our lives. We both expressed the things that we experienced because of this love. How we saw things differently, and that's what love does. It it allows. It brings love brings in purity into your beingness, and then that translates within into your sight. So you see purity in everything because you see the love in everything. Because everything is okay. Hmm. People want to say that God is love. I understand where they're coming from in this, and I'm not going to um, be like, "No, you're wrong," but. No, you're wrong. Uh, just because, and it's not, there's no there's no such thing as wrong or right. It's just um, yes or not quite. 
yes. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and say that God, as you may or may not want to label it, is the energy that brought everything, all the universal energies in union. It, 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 God was the connective tissue. Love came after and kept the energy alive. It allowed for that essence to exist eternally. So God and love are the two energies of mother and father. They are the things that are eternal. They are why we are here. Why we are differentiated from all the other sentient life in the universe is because we have love intermingled with the God particles inside of us. And the God particles, this is going to be just too much for a lot of people for, to, to understand just because of experiential stuff. And like, oh yeah, God is everything. This is accurate. God is everything. Manifest. God is the speed. God is the thing, the attribution that allows for all of, this, all of this to exist and manifest. Love is the thing that allows it to exist over and over, moment to moment, eternal. And this is, this is why humanity is so important. Is because we are the only ones that this has happened with because of God because of the purity and it's not his or her but a lot of times you will see uh, God's spoken as uh, him or his because of God's purity of thought because of what he wanted he hmm, I'm saying this not just meaning, not ju not saying that he is a male. I'm not attributing that. I'm just trying to describe it as the masculine, the out force, the outward inertia. God created this, but there are many other gods. You can liken the gods that also create, but because love hasn't, because hmm, why love hasn't attached to them yet is because of the purity, the purity there is not likened to love's energy, it's not attuned with it. Because the energy with other godlike beings and their creations, um, there's still an agenda involved. And this correlates with our age right now, in the age of esoteric, which we are coming out of right now. This is why you can go on YouTube, you can go on whatever, and find things coming to the surface about our truth, our true past, our, the true essence of humanity. These things have controlled us um, in many cycles. And they are after something, and that's what they are at. What they are after is love. They want that loves co-creation. They want that eternal answer. The answer to the their equation. 
but there is no answer. Like it's the Fibonacci, it's the golden means phi. There, there's no answer to it. Like it's pure and perfect as it is. And if you can't get that, then you aren't with that, and you, your creations will demise over and over. And that's why we as humans have been dying. But there's no such thing as death for us humans. We reincarnate. We, re we recycle. But now we're at the state where we don't need to recycle anymore. We don't need to keep doing that. So this is going to be very interesting. Things that are coming forth now. People that are going to be coming forth and blasting through the bullshit of, ooh, age, and once you reach a certain age, things start to deteriorate. Hmm, we'll see about that. We'll put that to the test. We'll see if regeneration isn't a thing, naturally. We'll see about that. And then, there is also that, and then also this choosing to coincide with God's creation, God's creed of recycling, and we're doing this recycling because we have to right now. We have to because of the choices that we made in the past, of the forces that are upon us currently, and that have been feeding upon us, searching for that answer. They've been uh, using us as um, subjects of study to try and get their answer but that <laughs> God has not given them the answer because it's not for God to give God was given the choice of accepting love for him and her itself but no, he, he chose to throw it all in. He went all in to his creation. Because he saw the universal forces that they needed, the interconnectedness, that they needed to contemplate this creation of all of the things brought into one. This is why we are here. Because we are all of the universal forces brought into harmony. This is what they seek. They as in other gods, other sentient life forms. If you want to call them aliens, no. The aliens are the creations of these gods. So the aliens don't have free will. Just how it is. Don't care if you believe me. Listen to this and... and, and gain something from it or don't, that's fine. But the free... Essentially, they don't realize that they're after the love. That's, that's the only thing that's eternal, it's the only thing that keeps things keep as in makes it everlasting <sighs> so we have been through many cycles in with in being here in this form on this plane of having, of reaching certain points and then um, allowing the corruption to come in once again. But, um, and essentially, and I will go ahead and say what it is, it's uh, the weakest of the human race rising to the top because they are given the tools that they need to put all the other humans into slavery.
You will see what your karma is. I know you felt me. I have sent you, your, the priests, as they like to be called. The energy of what is coming to you. But that's yet to be decided. And that's not up to me, or whatever. There's no me, but the things that I have felt because of the things that you have done. I have to keep coming back to the realization that you are weak, even though you are the strongest among us because you engaged upon certain things. You were learned in certain arts. That doesn't mean you are the strongest, though, because the strongest are the ones that are the purest in love. And this is going to take many incarnations for you to finally come back to. And this is if you are allowed to come back. We'll see what your karma is. We'll see if I'm involved with that as I have expressed that I want to be because I would enjoy that. feeding upon the ones who have enslaved humanity for cycles. But the altruistic, pure side of me knows that you are me and you have just fallen, fallen prey to powers that were stronger than you because you were weak at the time. So you succumb to that. You succumb to the voices, the whisperings. And so uh, over time you will be taught of your folly. Over time, you will be allowed to reintegrate into the all, into humanity, because you betrayed, and you know this, you fucking betrayed all of us. Especially now after certain forces have made themselves obvious. The karma is weighing upon your heart, so that's, uh, nothing needs to be done, because it's already... You're, you're beginning to feel again, so that's where the karma is. You're beginning to feel again, and in that feeling, you're realizing what you have done. Oh my god, what have I done? You betrayed all of us. You betrayed yourself. You betrayed God. And you are going to have to deal with that for eternity, because yes, you know how to reincarnate over and over and over again, but there are those of us that know how to seek you out and make you reincarnate over and over and, and not live in this realm. Stay astral. Stay disincarnate if we so choose to make that a reality for you. And it's not, that's not what you deserve necessarily, because what you deserve is mm, just anyone that uh, falls prey to lower emotions and lower aspects, you can say egotistic, uh, self-serving things, anyone that falls prey to this, uh, it's because they are weak themselves. They have yet to realize what love is. They don't know what love is. So they are uh, the weakest among us. And that's the only reason why this was allowed to happen is because the weakest among us was ignored. That's, that's just how it is. So 
so you're no longer going to be ignored and I don't want you to be have attention in that and I mean this has already happened a lot because a lot of people have uh, read about your doings not even read but just everyone feels it but more people are being uh, guided into seeing this for themselves and once I uh, when whenever I was first allowed to see that and, and guided into that um, I sent you uh, nooses I guess you could say noose noose as in uh, I wanted to stamp out your existence I sent you uh, my pain, our pain that you put us through. But because I was not as adept as you in certain energies, I uh, had a rebound effect. And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say what happened. Uh, it's just going to sound crazy or whatever. But yeah, you know, so yeah, I felt that. So my hope is that you realize your folly. Step away from what you have been engaging with. Mm, do what grandfather did and transition back naturally to be recycled naturally. You know what priest I'm talking about. Follow in his steps. Because that is your path to salvation. Otherwise, you will be uh, subject to damnation in the ones that want to come after your ass. Well, we'll do this. And that karma will play out for all of us. But, essentially, we cannot repeat these things, or we will keep repeating um, our cycles that we've been going through, our yugas, cycles of time. So, yes, there's going to be a moment where we have to uh, act out, uh, I'll express uh, the pain that we have been uh, subjected to that, but ultimately is what we have allowed to happen so that needs to come forth uh, once the ones who have been who have been propagating this the more and more people who have uh, that realize this um, so I, this is my message to those people Cool your ardor. Realize the folly in their ways. And that if you seek vengeance, you seek a repeated pattern that we have been on. And is that what you really want? I don't think it is. But when emotions run high, a lot of times, we don't think so clearly and we don't think about those things so uh, my message is not just to people but to the universal forces that we are going to release these things that have been uh, binding us for many cycles but in that process, we are going to release it and recognize, finally realize the mishap, the misstep that we keep taking in our process. And I will clarify that a little bit more as well later on.
so yeah that's enough for now I guess I suppose I reckon I reckon the reckoning is happening I implore those that feel the deepest to recognize the cycles, the repeated patterns, and to realize in order to break those patterns, in order to break the chains to bind, we have to overcome them. We have to see them for what they are and not give in to these feelings of retribution or vengeance. We have to realize the ones that acted upon us, why we are in the state that we are in collectively, those people that are uh, almost uh, responsible for that, they are like children in that they are young in heart. They have uh, forsaken their own hearts. So don't forsake in yours. Don't give in to these lower expressions and emotions. Rise above them. Realize what you are and the things that the energy that keeps you, the energy that allows you to exist, that co-creates with you. Decide if you are for or against that. And get clearer, because that's, that's where it's at. Clarity and with impurity. Until next time.